So today we got a package in the mail. We received our package from Signature Solar. This is a Delta 6 kilowatt grid tie inverter. Uh, package came in slightly damaged, as you can see in the video here. We have uh, hopefully not lost anything in shipping. Here we go, let's see what we have inside the box. It looks like inside the box we have our quick start guide here on the top. Uh, this has general basic information on what comes in the package and the installation instructions. However, it does not come with detailed instructions about wiring and voltage, that sort of thing. Um, that is actually in the uh, full installation manual which does not come in the box. So underneath the packaging we have the inverter. Um, again, this is a Delta 6 kilowatt inverter originally made by Solar City, uh, sold to us by Signature Solar out of Texas. So now we're going to take the time, we're going to look through the box here, see if we lost any hardware or anything like that, or if there's any packages of screws, and uh, how to get the inverter out of the box. This inverter isn't very heavy, but it's not super light either. I believe uh, this came in the mail with a weight of, I want to say 30 pounds, but I could be wrong. So. Here we are, we're going to have to move the box because it was in there pretty good. So we ended up tipping it sideways so that we can get the inverter out of the box um, without damaging anything. So give us a second here and we'll get her out of the box. And again, this thing weighs um, upwards of 30 pounds and it's uh, fairly bulky. So it's a little hard to get, uh, get in and out of the box. So we're going to just set that there and you know remove the rest of the foam and packaging. And below the inverter, we found our mounting hardware. Now this did not come with any lag bolts or any particular types of screws. It just comes with a metal plate and that's pretty much it. So moving on from here, we're going to just inspect the plate, make sure it's not bent or damaged in shipping. Everything came in uh, undamaged despite the, you know, the box. It was actually packaged extremely well. So on the bottom of the inverter here, we're going to take a quick look and you'll see that there is some grommets on the bottom of the inverter. These grommets um, unbolt, um, they have a plastic fitting on the inside um, and they have a flathead screwdriver attachment on the outside. Um, these are a one piece unit. Um, those holes are three quarter inch and uh, half inch holes. I think the, they actually get larger. I think the ones on the end are one inch, but um, again, it didn't come with a full installation instruction, so it doesn't actually say um, but we'll be covering that uh, later in an update video. Alright, so moving on from here, we're going to uh, start the installation video. So we got this mounted onto the wall. We have a stud on the left and a stud in the center. Um, the one on the right does not have a stud in it, however, that is a plywood back sheet there, and it is three quarter inch thick, which is more than strong enough to hold our 30 pound inverter. Um, from what we can tell, there's no additional securement clips used, so once the inverter is set on there, it should just lock into place. Um, there is no like set screws or anything like that that came in the packaging. So from here, we're going to uh, get ready to put our inverter up on the wall. It should just slide right on. Um, we're about to find out, though. We'll see what happens from here. Briefly, I want to discuss the wiring before we get to putting the inverter up. So while we have the panel and everything still open, this is our junction box that we have wired up. We have this set up to both power our EV outside and run down to our basement. So this line right here runs to our basement to the primary grid panel downstairs. We have this panel wired up to a 60 amp breaker downstairs and we have 80 amp 6 gauge wire. This line right here is set up to power both our EV and receive the grid tie power as well. So we can do all that in one junction box. We have a couple of additional auxiliary panels that run outside as well for our regular 120 volt outlet. So right here in this corner, that's our line that's going to be connected to our grid tie. And again, that's six gauge 80 amp wire on a 30 amp breaker. It's overkill for what we actually need, but it's always better to have a heavier wire than a not heavy enough wire. Now this wire was quite expensive. I think it was $150 for uh, 50 feet of it. We had it left over from another project, so it worked out perfect, but we're going to mount our inverter fairly close, um, so we don't need a lot of it, but um, again, it's a very costly wire. I think it's a dollar something a foot, so you know, you want to be sparing with your wiring and uh, plan accordingly. Make sure that you mount your inverter in a location to which you're going to use as little wire as possible. 
Now over here on the floor, I have our Delta inverter. Now on the sides right here, there is actually a grab handle on either side. Did I get that? I don't think I got it. Oh, I didn't. There we are. Okay. Second time is the charm. So there is a mounting bracket with two clips on the top and two clips on the bottom. When I first slid it on, only the bottom side went in. As you saw, I just lifted up slightly, pushed back, locked the unit down in. Now I have already removed two of the connections down here to allow us to run our wiring. Um, I don't currently have grommets that fit these. We're going to install those later. So here we are, we have our inverter mounted on the wall here, and briefly we're going to talk about the mounting bracket. We have it in here securely. Like I said, the unit weighs about 30 pounds and it seems to be holding to the wall quite nicely. This unit is rated for indoor or outdoor use, so, you know, that bracket's designed to, you know, withstand wind and things of that nature as well. This is our AC bypass slash inverter switch. We'll cover that a little bit later when we put the front cover on. This is our DC disconnect switch. This switch completely separates the connection to the DC side from our PV inputs to the unit. These are our PV inputs, PV1 and PV2. Each input has a set for two strings. It can handle 400 volts at 20 amps on each string, so a total of 80 amps uh, between four strings on this connection. Now this breaker does disconnect them in the event that you shut it off. So this particular unit is actually quite picky about its power that comes into it. We did some testing earlier in the day and found out that this unit requires right around 380 volts to fully operate. We tried several lower voltages, even though the manual, because the manual says you can. However, it kept throwing a fault code. So it wasn't until we got closer to the 400 volt mark that it actually picked up and started working. Once we figured out the voltage, we were able to determine uh, how to get the system to up and running. And like I said, right around 400 to 380 volts, the system seemed to be happy with it. What happened was, is the system went straight from fault to operation. So there was a red light on and it kicked right over and started to fire up and it worked flawlessly after that. So once it got a happy voltage and it was, it was comfortable working with, it worked with no issues whatsoever after that point. So we cut our wire, and now that we've got our wire cut, we're going to strip off enough wire. Now, I want to have enough to come up in here, be able to twist this to go into this connector. So I need roughly probably that much wire. Now, like I said, I don't have the proper grommet right now for this, so I want to leave as much sleeve as possible because I don't want to have it. I want to give us that little bit of excess barrier. Now, I'm just cutting very lightly down the very center of this wire. And the reason we're going down the center is this wire has a center ground lead, which is already a bare wire. So if, as long as I cut right down the middle, very gently, it uh, won't uh, hurt anything. Now this wire generally is very, very soft and it actually pulls apart very easily. So if you happen to need more of this, because it, I, I actually cut it above where the knife cut started, if you need more, you can actually pull these wires apart and it will zipper right down here. So that being said, we're gonna do a quick test fit. Bring this up here, like that. And then we're gonna end up having to bend these 90 degrees like so, one, two, and three. That looks pretty dang good, okay. So we're going to bring this back down, just kind of get an idea. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's pull these back out. Now, in here, inside this box, this is a line, neutral, line two. That's for hot, hot, and neutral. So generally speaking, your primary line is always your black, right? So black is going to be primary. Generally speaking, if you had a four-wire wire, which I do not have, Four wire would have red, black, and white, and a ground. We don't have that, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna run a separate ground here in a minute up to this terminal block over here. But for right now, we have a hot, hot, and our neutral connection. So let's go ahead and strip off a little bit of these. And for most people that don't know this, here in the US, your neutral connection and your ground feed uh, to the same exact bus bar. 
so this particular panel has a ground that feeds outside and actually feeds to its own independent ground because it's a sub panel and sub panels do not get grounded uh, with a specific ground lead to the main breaker so you only run your neutral line to the main breaker which and then the sub panel gets its own separate ground so it gives it a uh, bit of isolation from the primary ground so for instance we have a bit of excess wire that we can work with we can actually uh, run us a very heavy neutral if we really need to but however this particular application doesn't need one because this is a grid tie and we're not running loads off from this that require the neutral connection you only really need the two hots to have the heavier gauge wire however later um, I do plan on replacing this with four gauge wire so these particular connections actually use a spring-loaded connection, so a tiny flathead, and it has to be a flathead. I don't recommend trying to do this with a Phillips head because you can't get under the bar. But what I did earlier is I pushed in here and got the connection in, and of course now it doesn't want to do it smoothly. Why would it not do it smoothly? There it goes. All right. By pushing it down and in like that, now we have a, we should have a nice easy time getting our white wire in here because the white wire just goes in like that slides all the way in boom pull the wire out done all right so now that we did that and for anybody that's curious the breaker is off and the power to the sub panel is off so we don't have to worry about anybody getting electrocuted while we're doing this see it's sit down at a slight angle all right bring that in like that Pull that out, that wire is now connected. All right, moving on to the next one. Same thing, a little bit of an angle. Bring this black wire over like that, in, done. Nice and clean, all the way to the backboard, super solid connection. And if you see, like I said, where we cut our insulation, we left just enough to where if there's any excess pressure right here, it's on the insulation, not on the wiring. So there's no risk of any sort of grounding or any problems of that nature. So now we're going to get ready to hook our first PV array into place. Now this array right here goes in, and again I'm using a flat, small flathead screwdriver, come down at a little bit of an angle, push in, it should go all the way in and lock, and these are spring-loaded connections, so just push this all the way in like that, pull it up. Nice and easy. Now this is our next one right here. Now I've twisted these together to make them a little bit stronger since these are standard uh, welding wire. And this is a uh, eight gauge welding wire that we've ran for our solar. So it's a little bit heavier duty than what is actually required. This particular application because of the voltage does not require uh, eight gauge wire. I believe the specs on a 300 volt 20 amp circuit says you can run 10 gauge or even 12, but I think 10 would be the most I'd be comfortable going up to. So we now just got our first PV connection in. And uh, again, I apologize for not having the grommets. Um, I wasn't able to get them at this point. Okay. So here we are. We've put our next connection in. Now we had to do the same thing we did before where we push this down at a little bit of an angle. You lift up a little bit and then kind of push again and it'll open that connection all the way up. Now we've got our wire cleaned up. Ready to be inserted. There we go. It's all the way in and pull out. Beautiful. Nice and clean. Simple and easy. Simple and easy. Now, if you wonder, this connection does seem to come out just a little bit. I think I added just a touch to wire. I think we'll probably trim that up here in the near future. So here we are. We're going to get our last wire ready. We're going to start with this. We're going to do... Uh, Same thing as we did before, just like that. We're going to bring our line in like that. And insert that all the way in. There we go. We are now all the way in and done. Look at that. So, as it was pointed out to me a minute ago, I missed a step um, along the lines here. So before we do a power up, we're going to connect our Wi-Fi antenna. Um, this unit doesn't I don't have the app for this because I do not believe that Delta Solar has a functioning app currently that you can use, um, but I don't want the 
adapter to burn out. So we're going to connect our antenna so that way the Wi-Fi signal works properly. So we currently have this in AC bypass mode. We have all of our wiring connected and everything is good. And our DC breaker is in the off position. So what we can do now is we have our cover plate. Now this gets bolted on with four bolts in the back corner and has a really nice rubber seal. This unit is completely watertight and has really big radiated fins in the back so that way any heat that's generated gets dissipated off the back of the unit. So this cover just slides on like this and boom, just sits there. Now these are Allen keyed, um, so you just take an Allen wrench, tighten these up. Now this particular one, they designed this so that you cannot take this cover off if the DC is turned on. The only way to actually have this unit powered up is with the DC off, because as soon as you turn the DC on, just like that, it locks into place, because this has a pin that holds that on. And as you can see, as soon as you turn the DC on, it powers right up. All right, so here we are. We are ready to power up our Delta H6 inverter. We have got our PV lines connected. We have our AC lines connected. The AC is currently powered off for this unit but we're gonna go ahead and power this on. Now, we're gonna go with our DC side first because if there's a fault, it's gonna say fault as well as warming, but if everything powers up properly and there's nothing wrong, it'll go straight to operational. So we're gonna start with DC. Oh my God. Wow, I mean, you look like a little girl. All right, so these switches are much harder to turn than they look. All right, now I'm not sure if you guys heard it at home, but that unit just clicked. So there is a couple of contactors in here that have now closed. But see how the light is flashing? The light's flashing because there's no AC connection. So we're gonna flip the AC on. Light just went steady. We're gonna scroll through. Let's look at our system overview. We're currently in auto mode, grid tied. Uh, we are currently not producing any power. Let's see if we are bringing in any voltage. So our current grid voltage on line one is 120. Grid two is 120. We are not feeding any power back to the, at the moment to the grid. Uh, let's see, PV1 is at 368 volts. PV2 is at 351 volts. However, we are up and running. Um, we hooked up our green ground wire right there. That is a uh, 10 gauge ground wire to go with our rest of our setup here. So now that we have our all of our lines hooked up, the inverter is inverting. Um, we've generated about seven kilowatts in the hour or so, a couple hours of daylight that we managed to get today. In closing, we're here with our Solar City Delta H6 inverter. This inverter was purchased from Signature Solar down in Texas. We urge our viewers to check them out. They have a great line of products for sale and good customer service to go with it. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, comment below. If you didn't like the video, please tell us what we could do better in the future to make our videos better or more helpful for you. Any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you very much.